Hi there, we're at it again, solving three variable linear systems. This time, we're going to make use of the substitution method in order to solve a three variable system. Now, if you haven't already watched my video about solving three variable systems using elimination, um, I would recommend you do that first, just because I'm going to refer to a couple of things here that I have already taught there, and I'm not going to go through and restate them in the same clarity here as I did there. But one of the things that I will go ahead and kind of restate here is that recall, whenever you're trying to solve a three variable system, that the goal is to take it from a system with three variables down to a system with two variables down to a single equation with a single variable. All right, that's the idea. Now, when we're using substitution, that just means that we're going to make use of substituting in order to make this system get from three equations with three variables down to two equations with two variables. All right, now I'm going to write down the instructions that I need you to follow here, and if you will follow this process, the substitution method will work every time, granted that you're careful with copying down equations correctly and that you don't make silly mistakes, all right? When you're using the substitution method with a three variable system, the idea is that you first want to pick any equation and you want to isolate a variable in that equation. Then you want to substitute whatever you get into both of the remaining equations. So let's write that down. The first step here is to isolate a variable, any variable in any equation. Then the second step is that you substitute for whatever variable you solve for in one equation into both of the other equations. Now, this both part is not going to be possible every time, and you'll see that in the second system that I solved. But if it's possible to substitute for that variable in both of the other equations, do so in both of the other equations. And as a result, you're going to end up with two equations with two variables, and then you can solve that new two variable system and so forth, then it becomes just like what I taught you in the previous video, okay? So, these are the two principles that I need us to follow through with as far as the substitution part of solving this three variable system. Now, let me clear that off the screen so that I've got plenty of room to write. And let's remind you of some of the things that I like you to do with these three variable systems. One of those is organization, and I like you to organize yourself one way by labeling each of these equations, original equations, as equation 1, 2, and 3. And I do that just by putting the number of the equation in a circle. And later on then, it's easy for me to refer to that equation. And you'll see how that works if you don't already know how that works. Now, I just got done saying that the first thing in this substitution process is to take any equation and isolate any variable within that equation. Now, I always personally look for a place where I have a coefficient of positive 1 for a specific variable. And if you look in the first equation, this is the only place where you'll find an, a, a variable that has a coefficient of positive 1. Now, it's not what I have to isolate, but it's going to be a little bit easier to isolate that variable in this equation than it would be to isolate variables in any of the other equations. If for no other reason, then... If this coefficient is a 1, then when I get this term by itself, I don't have to worry about division, which means I have less of a chance of encountering fractions and or decimals, right? Okay, so let's take equation 1 and let's isolate the r in that equation. Now I'm just going to rewrite the equation really quickly. And when I isolate the R, I like to put the terms on the other opposite side in alphabetical order. I want a, the variable terms first and the constant term. It's just a way of organizing, that's all. Now I'm going to cancel out the P's and the Q's on this side of the equation, and I'm only going to have an R. I cancel out the 4P by subtracting 4P, so I'm going to have a negative 4P on the right side of the equation. I cancel out the minus Q by adding Q, so I'm going to have a plus Q. And then the negative 4 was already on the right side of the equation. It's going to maintain its sign. I didn't have to cancel it out or anything. It's just going to be minus 4. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that quantity, the negative 4p plus q minus 4, and I'm going to substitute it in place of r in both of the other equations. First, let's go ahead and substitute for the r in the second equation. 
And so notice I've just written that equation with parentheses where the r used to be. And now in those parentheses, I'll go ahead and put this value that we found that r is equivalent to negative 4p plus q minus 4. And then I'll go ahead and simplify that equation. I can't really solve it because it's got two variables. So I'll end up with negative p minus 8p plus 2q minus 8 after I distribute that 2 on the left side is equal to 8. And then I've got some light terms to go by. Negative p minus 8p is negative 9p. And then I've only got one term with a q. And then let's go ahead and cancel this minus 8 by adding 8 to both sides. And so that'll give me 16 over here. And just like I was doing with the elimination method, whenever I create an equation that has only two variables in it, I'm going to label that as a, with a new equation, and we're going to call that equation 4. It's going to be the fourth relevant equation for this system. Now, I happen to have two equations that have two variables right now. Equations 2 and 4 both only have two variables, but they're not the same two variables, are they? So, here's what I'm going to do next. Remember that I told you once you isolated a variable in one equation, I want you to substitute it into both of the other equations. So now, we're going to take the third equation, and replace the r there with negative 4p plus q minus 4. So you see where I made the substitution, just negative p plus 2q, and then plus 3 times, and then I put this value there, equals 9. All right, oh, that's right there. And then let's simplify this equation. Now, before I ever do that, remember that my fourth equation only had p's and q's in it, and now the next equation that I'm working with also only has p's and q's in it. Bonus. All right, let's proceed. We need to distribute this 3, so we're still going to have a negative p plus 2q, but now we'll have minus 12p plus 3q minus 12, all that being equal to 9. And then I have two pairs of light terms on the left side of the equation. I have a negative p that I can combine with a negative 12p to make a negative 13p. I have the 2q that I can combine with a 3q to make 5q. And then I have this constant term that I could go ahead and cancel out by adding 12 to both sides. And then on the right side, I would have 9, I would have 9 plus 12, which is 21. All right, now I've already told you that this is going to get us down to a second equation that has only P's and Q's, and that's a brilliant thing. When you isolate that variable and then substitute for it in both of the other equations, it guarantees that both of those other equations will not have that variable. All right, I made it so that I had two equations that don't have an R here and there. And as soon as you've got that, now you compare those two new equations into a new system. And when you've gotten to that point, you've hit gravy because now you know how to solve that two-variable system. Now, this is very important. I know the directions here say to solve the system by substitution. But as I told you in my elimination video, Whatever those directions are, it's telling you how to get the system down from three variables and three equations to two variables and two equations. Once you successfully whittled it down to a two-variable system, use any method you want to solve from there. And I bring that up because by far, elimination would be the easier of the two methods to use here because the P's and Q's in either equation aren't easily isolated without getting fractions here. All right, so I'll tell you what. I think I would like to eliminate the Q's because, well, 2 and 5 both go into 10, whereas you don't exactly know what negative 9 and negative 13 go into quite so easily, right? Let's multiply this top equation by negative 5 to make that a negative 10Q, and let's multiply the bottom equation by positive 2 to make that a positive 10Q so that we can then eliminate the Q's. Now, in case you didn't see my previous video, what I remember I I said the numbers with the circles in them are equation numbers. So I'm saying let's multiply equation 4 by negative 5 and equation 5 by 2 and then add those two things together. So let's go ahead and do so. Negative 5 times equation 4 is going to give me 45p uh, plus, no, actually, we're multiplying by negative 5, aren't we? So minus 10q equals, and 16 times negative 5 is negative 80. And then let's double the terms in equation 5. So that'll give us a negative 26p 
plus 10q is equal to 42. All right, and then when we combine those through addition, we're going to be able to cancel out the q's, which is what we planned for, and it's going to give us 19p is equal to negative 38. And so now we're finally down to where we have a single equation with a single variable, and we can solve for that variable. We know that p is equal to negative 2. And from here, it's a whole chain reaction thing again. Now that I know one of the variables, I can go back to any two-variable equation and substitute for that variable to find the next one. So I could go back to, say, equation 4, replace p with negative 2, and be able to find q. Like so. Now this is 18 right here, and I'd like to cancel out that 18 by subtracting 18 from both sides. That will leave me with 2q equals negative 2, so then q equals negative 1. And now that I know both p and q, I'm guaranteed to be able to figure out the value of r using any of the equations that had an r. Now the simplest of those to substitute into looks like equation 2 because it only had two variables, so I could just substitute for p to find r. But I would have the choice of using equations 1 or 3, which each have an r as well. And actually, maybe I should train you to do this. Didn't we isolate r in equation 1 so we know it's negative 4p plus q minus 4? This equation is made so that you can quickly substitute for p and q in order to find r. Let's substitute into that. Now, I did use the rearranged version of equation 1, but you see where I substituted negative 2 for p, and I substituted in negative 1 for q. That was all done right there. And so that gives me 8 minus 1 minus 4, which is 3. That's going to be my value of r. And the final step then is to write my solution as an ordered triple. The values of p, q, and r respectively are negative 2, negative 1, and 3. All right, so there you go. That's solving a three-variable system by substitution. Now, as I did with the last video, I'm going to tell you that these examples do take a little while, and if you feel 100% confident that you've got this, the method down, then you can maybe stop watching here. But if you'd like to see one more example, there is one more example coming up. And so I would uh, be happy for you to tag along with me in that example. Now for those of you that have tagged along, let's take a look at this system of equations that we're going to solve by substitution. And let's do our normal due diligence. Let's go ahead and organize first. So let's label the three equations that we've got. Now, at first glance, this looks much easier than what we just did. And I'm not going to tell you that it's not. The reason it looks easier is because each of these equations only has two variables. But notice that none of the three equations has the same two variables. Now, even though that makes it look easier, and in truth, it actually is a little bit easier, what's really easy here is to get lost in substituting and substituting and substituting and substituting. Okay? Um, if you'll follow the advice that I gave you in the last video, where we're going to isolate one variable and we're going to try to substitute it into both of the other equations, then we're going to be fine. So let's pick the variable that looks easiest to isolate, and certainly it looks like i in the first equation is the easiest to isolate. And so let's go ahead and work with that. Let me copy that equation down again. And so if we add 2j to both sides, we're going to get i is equal to 2j minus 1. And now we'll take that quantity, 2j minus 1, and we'll try to substitute it into each of the other equations. Let's first go ahead and substitute into the second equation, where we've got 5i minus k equals negative 4. As you can see, I've done, I've replaced the 5 with 2j minus 1. Sorry, I replaced the i with 2j minus 1. So I'm going to multiply that by 5, and then let's continue. It'll give me 10j minus 5 minus k is equal to negative 4. I have no like terms to combine on the left side of the equation, but I would like to cancel out the constants um, by adding 5 to both sides, and so that'll give me negative 4 plus 5, or 1 on the right side, and then I'll have 10j minus k on the left side. And that will be my equation 4. I successfully created another two-variable equation. Okay. Now, 
Here's where you're not going to be able to follow my advice directly because it's not possible, but the fact that you thought about it is going to keep you from getting confused later on. I said I would like you to substitute this value of i in both of the other equations if it was possible. Well, there's not an i in the third equation, so there's not going to be anywhere to substitute that. Oh my, what will we do? Well, here's where we've actually created a good situation. When we substituted for i in the second equation, that gave us an equation that has j's and k's. Now, it's not a problem then that the third equation doesn't have an i to substitute for because that already is an equation that just has j's and k's. We can combine equation 3 and equation 4 into a system of equations, a two, two variable system now, and then we'll be able to solve. So don't try to make this more complicated than it is. Your goal was to get down to two equations with the same two variables, and now with this equation 3 and equation 4, we've accomplished that. We've grouped them together, and we're going to try to eliminate either the j's or the k's. I think eliminating the k's is going to be far easier. I can just take either one of these equations and multiply it by negative 1. All right, so why don't I take the top equation and multiply it by negative 1, and then we'll add the bottom equation. Or in other words, we'll multiply equation 3 by negative 1, and then we'll add in equation 4. So here I've multiplied equation 3 by negative 1, and now I'm going to be able to combine those two equations through addition. The k and the minus k will cancel. I will be left with 6j on the right side of the equation. I'll have 3 on, sorry, I'm on the left side a moment ago, and now I have 3 on the right side. And so j is going to equal 3 over 6, which is the same thing as 1 half. And now we can go back and keep substituting into two variable equations in order to find another variable. Let's say we take equation 3, let's replace j with 1 half, and that will help us find a value of k. Now doing say that will give me 2 minus k is equal to 2, and so the opposite of k is equal to 0, and that means k then is equal to 0. And whenever you want to find the third variable, you can always go back to the first equation where you isolate it from one variable and then substitute into that to find the third one. All right? I really could have used any equation as an i in it, but that's always kind of a go-to for this three-variable substitution um, type of situation. So we'll have i is equal to 2 times 1 half minus 1, which is, of course, 1 minus 1 or 0. Now, briefly, I just realized I made a mistake, and this is the kind of thing that I try to stress with you guys. Um, I found the wrong value of k because when I rewrote equation 3 right here, I accidentally wrote positive 2 on the right side where it was supposed to be a negative 2. So let me put in this negative sign right there, negative sign right there. And then when I subtract 2 from both sides in this line, that'll give me a negative 4. And if negative k equals negative 4, then k is going to equal positive 4. Just those little things like miscopying a sign like I did right there throw off your entire solution. Luckily, I didn't need the value of k to find the value of i, or else I'd have to go back and fix that. It was just coincidental that that happened that way. All right, so we were able to find that the ordered triple, the point where these three planes right here would intersect one another, would have the coordinates 0, 1 half, and 4. So that's using the substitution method to solve a three-variable system of equations. Can get intense if you make mistakes like I did with that sign, for instance, but the process itself is simple enough, and with a little attention to detail, you'll be fine. All right, guys, thank you. See you later.